Hello, and welcome back to Many Adventures Mini. So, I do want to apologize yet again that I missed another video last week. Uh, I've been having a bit of a shift change stuff going on with my day job, uh, night job, since I typically work graveyards. Uh, but I do still need to work a primary job in order to keep a roof over my head, so occasionally that will supersede putting out videos, uh, and sometimes life just gets in the way. I do my best to get a video out every week, but it's not always going to happen. So there may be more adjustments uh, and potentially missed videos over the next couple weeks as I'm adjusting to a new uh, shift at my work. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to do my best to keep the uploads as regular as possible. And with that little bit of channel update out of the way, we're going to jump in. So this month with Artisans Guild, you saw in my video a couple weeks ago, I did the little demon gruntlings. Uh, going more along with the demon set that they released, they released this really cool minion portal thing. It's kind of like an altar with a swirly evil portal. You'll probably have seen it in the thumbnail. Uh, it's really cool, and I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to practice more of my object source lighting technique. Uh, light up the whole thing with the glowing portal and whatnot. So that's what I did. Uh, I did a very simple version of it, but I think it came out looking really cool. I tried not to do it too over the top, and I think I got the effect that I was looking for. So without too much extra, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how I painted this minion portal. Alright, so here is this beautiful minion portal sculpt by the great people over at Artisans Guild. There's lots of cool, clean lines, but surprisingly like organic structure going in through this. I'm a big fan of this sculpt and how it's designed and put together. I love it, and so here we go. Uh, this time I'm going back to my normal uh, white-gray primer that I'm using. Uh, You'll see why in a minute. Uh, I just get everything finally coated in that. And then I thin down this dark stone from Army Painter. It takes me a couple tries to get the right consistency. Just give everything a thorough base coat in this. It's one of my preferred colors to use as a base for stone. And since that's the majority of this, I just run it through the airbrush in order to make this process go faster. You can definitely do this part with a brush, but I did it with the airbrush because it's faster and I needed to practice a little bit of control before I got to using the airbrush for object source lighting later on in the video. Then my next step after I get that base coat in on there is just to coat everything liberally in my homemade black wash just so that I get all the pop between the high and the low points and get everything to have a nice little bit of contrast here off the gate and get going. I try to clear it up from the portal a little bit since it's not where I want it doesn't really hurt it, but I prefer not to have to deal with it. And once that has dried, I start off with some uniform gray and I start dry brushing. Now this is where I start applying my object source lighting just a little bit. Since this is a brighter color of the stone and I'm trying to get a high contrast of light coming off of the portal, I am dry brushing away from the portal. So I'm only letting the bristles touch the stone of the sculpt going in a single direction always when I'm brushing away from the source of light which in this case is the portal and I'm being very thorough with it so it's a little bit difficult to tell but in the areas farthest away from the portal like on the uh, on the opposite sides of the uh, arches and at the bottoms of the steps and whatnot it's most noticeable and I do the same thing with the skeleton bone just to bring everything out a little bit and then I thin down this lava orange into my airbrush and start just carefully applying it to the portal section. I'm going for kind of an orange-red glowing portal here. And the reason I'm applying this with the airbrush is because it will give me a little bit of natural blow through that hits the surrounding area and gets kind of that glow effect. And I'm doing the same thing with the airbrush on the little crystals so that they look like they're small little glowing crystals next to the airbrush and I'm just being very careful. I don't want to blast it too much and I don't want it to go off in any weird directions or anything. Uh, once I get a, bit, a nice base coat, I'll just go around and 
blow the airbrush a little bit in areas here and there to get that glowing look. And then I take this uh, Fire Drake orange and my pure red, and I start just kind of glazing this onto sections of the portal, uh, starting with mid and high points, leaving the deeper areas that very bright lava orange, so I get that kind of glowing from within look. It's the same kind of technique I use when I'm painting fire, uh, just going with more of an orange-red theme in this case instead of like a yellow to orange-red, which really would make it look a lot more like flames. But I didn't think that was quite appropriate for this, so I'm going with two tones of orange fading out into a red at the edges, which you'll see here in a little bit. Um, and I also kind of highlight the edges of the crystals with this other color of orange just to make them kind of stand out a little bit and get that going but you, you can already see that this glow effect is really coming along and this is just adding a little bit of detail to help some areas pop and kind of sell the effect so i'm not going to be adding any additional colors to the glowing sections other than the base orange because that already sells it well enough and i don't want to overdo it i'm trying to keep this as simple as possible i'm trying not to do too much and end up ruining the effect but here you can see now I'm taking the pure red and I'm starting to just carefully thin it down and glaze it around the edges of the portal so that it kind of fades out and some of the higher points doing almost kind of like an edge highlight. Uh, not exactly an edge highlight, but uh, the same kind of concept there. Just running it along the edges just a little bit so it looks like that's the point of the portal that's farthest from the epicenter and getting the effect you want. And then I come back and I'm doing the same thing on the back uh, and filling in some of the middle bits as well, just trying to get that smooth transition as best as I can, just using this glazing technique. Uh, it requires a lot of back and forth, but it's one of the smoothest transitions you tend to get when painting like this, and so I tend to prefer it, even if it's a little tedious and time consuming. Uh, and then I also, uh, intermittently put some red on the edges of the crystals just to kind of give the same effect. Not as thoroughly as I did with the last color, but just enough to have those little glimmers of red coming in through those orange crystals. And here, now I'm just touching up and giving the final steps before we move on to our matte varnish and give everything a thorough coat to get the shininess that comes with my homemade washout and give everything a nice protective coat for when it gets put on the game table. And here we are the final images. I'm really happy with this uh, with this glow effect. I think I got a much higher level of contrast than I have in the past, and I think I pulled the effect off really good. And so here's just a quick image with it surrounded by some demons. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I had a lot of fun painting this one. Uh, it was relatively simple, but I was playing around with advancing more of my airbrush techniques, which I have let slack in quite a bit, uh, part of it is that I'm using kind of a hand-me-down airbrush that I got from my dad a long time ago and I haven't been the best at figuring out how to like take care of it and get the best out of it so it's got a bit of like a stuck trigger and uh, a few like a sticky trigger and some few other like small issues that I've had trouble figuring out so if anybody knows like anything about helping me fix that kind of stuff let me know down below uh, but overall I'm really happy with how this one turned out uh, I think I did a pretty good job at getting the effect that I wanted. So uh, with that, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section down below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps out a lot. And if you want to see any future videos that I release, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever any of my videos get released. If you're interested, I also have a Facebook page down below where you can see occasional sneak peeks and additional updates for when I put videos out. Uh, and if you want to help support me directly, uh, you can find links to my Etsy store down below where I occasionally release minis that I've painted and whatnot uh, out for people to buy. And there's also a Patreon link down there as well if you want to support me that way. And with that, I hope to see everybody back here again next week.